People ask me why I do art. I'm like you leave me in a corner, you leave me in this room. There's a tissue paper and a pencil. I'll draw. This is what I do. I don't do it for your recognition. I don't do it for Instagram. I don't do it for money. This is what I like to do. Hence, I'm seeing if I can make money out of it. But if you're doing something because it'll go viral, because it'll be a success, because it'll be all of that, then you don't know what you're chasing. Because those things don't have formula. It could be the worst thing someone's heard, or it could be like you and me are sitting here talking, laughing, and we're like, oh, so much fun, and someone listen like this is boring. Yeah. You have no control on this. So then you and me should sit here and talk only because we enjoy this conversation, not because what this will lead to. And if we don't enjoy this conversation, we should end it here. Simple. Okay. You have control on your ability to react to your environment. That is the only control you have. Vivek is the senapati of Vana Sena Studios and Vana Sena School. This is part two of my conversation with Vivek. So if you haven't checked out part one yet, now would be a good time to do so because this episode's going nowhere. Yeah, this episode's right here. I'll stay right here. Go check out part one and come back because that was definitely an eye opener for me. Vana Sena Studios is a one of a kind animation and digital media house focusing primarily on Indian stories and designs. And Vana Sena School is a school that provides free education in animation, design, and art. while also providing free stay free food and what not both vivek and i talk about some really hard hitting topics in this one we talk about how you just don't have control over most things in life and hence why it's so important for you to focus on things that are actually in your control this whole stoic philosophy is something that's super close to my heart if you've been following me for long enough you'd know that i've created a video or two around this and i've also spoken about this at length in some of the other episodes but I think this whole illusion of control that we all have is something that is so important for us for us to understand because most things are not in our control. So yeah, in this in this conversation we go into that and so much more. We also talk about how purpose and happiness and its pursuit are all intertwined. And if that wasn't heavy enough, we also talk a whole lot about death. Yeah, we talk about death. death being such a taboo topic something that not a lot of people talking talk about my wife who was in the room when we when we were recording this conversation really teared up when this whole topic about death came up because well we just don't talk enough about death and i think we really ought to be talking more about death especially when you're kids right this whole topic of death is such a taboo when it comes up we're like oh no let's let's is you know not deal with that right now and maybe let the kid deal with it when they grow up which i don't think is the right approach to taboo topics in general especially something like death which is inevitable for everyone right so yeah let me not give away most of it death is something that we talk about as well so many things in this conversation so many eye openers and i'm hoping it will help you in your journey and uh, well that's exactly why i'm doing all of this so yeah would you like to be featured on the show would you like to be part of against the odds you can now you can send us your questions in video format to contact at akashdamodan.com we're taking questions so if you send us a video of about a minute a minute and a half talking about how the show has helped you and also if you have a question for either me or the guests then we'll answer it on the show and help you out in your journey as well i'm hoping that the experience that the guests are able to bring and the small little experience that i'm able to bring will help you in your journey somehow so yeah send in your questions in video format to contact at akashdamodan.com yeah i'm putting in a ton of energy and my soul into this project We have passed the fiftieth episode mark. The feedback's great. The show's getting in front of more people, but I'd like it to get in front of even more people. So, if the if you'd like to be part of this movement, if you'd like to really help out in getting this show in front of more people, then you can do a couple of things, which will really cost you nothing, but will help me a ton in our journey. So, if you like the episode, and only if you like the episode, then hit the like button. sometime through the course of the uh, episode or maybe you're done with the whole episode and then you want to hit the like button but don't forget to hit the like button i know i shouldn't be talking about this idly it should just happen organically i get that but 
a lot of people forget to do that because of this whole long form storytelling bit, right? Long form narrative. I've done that as well in the past where I've just forgotten to hit the like button. So yeah, if you do like the episode, hit the like button. And if you are listening to this on audio and if you're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, you can help out by simply leaving a rating and review. It'll only take you again 10 to 15 seconds, but it'll mean the world to me. It'll get the show in front of more people. It really validates uh, the show and gets people gives people more clarity on whether the show is for them or not. So yeah, and also another simple thing you can do is just share it with your family and friends. Yeah, I think there's enough of like plugging and trying to, you know, sell our show. But yeah, I think if it has organically helped you, if it has really naturally helped you, if it hasn't helped you, then don't do any of that. But I'm hoping it has. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, this show's audio is brought to you by Sennheiser. Our audio partner is Sennheiser. We'll talk a little bit more about this collaboration a little later in the episode. But I think right now is a good time to get into the episode. This is my conversation, my part two of my conversation with Vivek Ram. Not my part two, part two of my conversation with Vivek Ram. This is Against the Odds and I'm your host Akash Damodar. This show is all about inspiring people to take the unconventional path and lead a life that is truly fulfilling and rewarding. Watch and listen as talented individuals take us through their learnings, the challenges they face, and how they continuously adapt to overcome them. I think uh, most people are uh, constantly striving for something, right? They're working towards something. That's where all of this unhappiness comes mm. from, expectations, right? And uh, I think the, the, and that's what all of these stoic, mindfulness, well-being, all of these people talk about the same thing. The idea is to not have expectations, but you kind of, like I said, get acting and mm. right? work towards what you're, what you have clarity on, or at least what's in your control, right? right? And I think that's, I think, a good segue into purpose and you know passion and all of that and you spoke a little bit about that in the previous conversation that you had but I'd like you to go a little bit in depth about how you said there's dharma there's your duty there's uh, again you I'd like you to break it down I think there are four aspects to it I don't entirely remember all of it if you could go into that that'll be really helpful dharma artha kama moksha I think it's a great uh, someone really broke it down quite nicely but it's of course very misconstrued very Misunderstood, I would say, at least my opinion, because people look at dharma as religion, bad idea. People look at artha as money. People look at karma as love. I don't see it that way. For me to break it down and I've seen whatever results I've seen in its own way, dharma is basically, like we've seen how, like I said, we're community animals. We're animals. Hmm. So what defines us is different. Is it just our creativity? We wear pants and shirts and clothes. Not really. We're still animals. We still survive. We're still constantly thinking about survival. Today, if you don't get a meal, it's going to freak you out. Right? If you don't see the bank balance, bank balance is the new meal. Right? Where you're like, oh, it's dipped down a certain amount, which means I already my imagination has told me there is no meal coming six months from here. I won't have a shelter. So we are not different from animals. We're doing pretty much the same thing. If you can find out what defines you differently, if you can not be an animal, this is one of the tenets of dharma, where in nature, survival of the fittest is the strongest instinct Mm. across nature, including humans. Dharma kind of flips that around and says, You nurture the weakest. This is your basic tenet of dharma. If you really go into some of the older books, they will talk about religion and all of that. The commentaries will be of newer people will be over religion. You really look at the stories, the tenets of it is the survival of the weakest, not the fittest. So the strong take care of the weak is a philosophy you do not see in nature. It's, uh, you will see a mother, you know, take care of her child in nature. You will see a, lion take care of a cub in nature the day you see a lion take care of a deer child you're like this is new 
it does not exist in nature unless you unless for those rare occasions which is why kindness when you see even with people you're like wow that's amazing this is the this is a flip to nature nature does not work like this right nature works in terms of survival that's how it is now dharma is that definition of what can we do differently Mm-hmm. so that society thrives and so that we all thrive in a much nicer kind of way and then we can take care of everything around so it's not just humans but you can take care of the things around you you can take care of the plants around you animals around you everything you know because now you are in a position of power can you not oppress whatever is around simple example like my one of the kids in the house is asking we have a rule in the house we have one rule in the house I think I know. Yeah, you know this one, right? Uh, actually, two rules. First rule is be respectful to everyone, be respectful of their things and their space and everything. Be kind. Second rule is you don't kill anything in the house. You don't kill the smallest ant or the cockroach or the or a lizard or a spider. No spider webs are broken. You displace if necessary. You take them out. There's a garden. Move them into the garden, but don't kill anything. This is one of the rules in the house. Mosquitoes, I understand, although I don't kill. so i understand when the others do it i'm like i know it's a big task to ask for people although like i keep questioning them i'm like when a mosquito bites is it painful or is it annoying which one of the two and most of the times the answer is annoying i'm like so you you're actually taking a life because something's annoyed you right so anyway we were talking about this and then one of the kids asked me why do you do this why do you look at the ants and say don't just observe them don't kill them don't do anything i'm like we start with the ants this is a small creature i can kill it i can use it then i'll move on to maybe a bigger bug or a beetle and it's still smaller than me then i move on to a dog then i move on to whatever animals are around me and i say these are all for me here and i can do whatever i want and when you've noticed that it works you move on to people and you start looking at people as small looking at people as usable looking at people as they're there for you for your convenience it starts from that small ant the thought starts from there so if you can look at the ant as your equal you are trying to survive i am trying to survive you will start realizing that people are the same it's like you will not project that on to a higher platform this is the reverse of dharma this is sorry the reverse of nature which is what dharma was ideally supposed to be where you take care of the things around you you know so you don't just you're not an animal that takes care of your child when people say i'm a good mother good father no that's day. natural that's natural yeah. <laughs> there's nothing nothing fascinating about this if you're not <laughs> yeah then you're like <laughs> they're like oh. like there are animals who do a better job <laughs> right like there's a chameleon out there that's doing a better job than you <laughs> so, so if you're not it's a problem but if you are great no no nothing wrong with that this is the most beautiful feeling i agree with you most beautiful feeling you have actually experienced love yeah. probably for the first time if you start spreading that around to a lot of other people you'll really realize that that love can be expanded uh but if you can actually do that then you're actually thinking about dharma once you figure this out is so it has nothing to do with religion right mm-hmm. it is just about who you are as a human what is your position in the entire cosmos as a human all the humans die today nature will thrive right you really want to save the planet <laughs> that's what you do right so ah uh, this show has taken like a <laughs> massive twist and <laughs> it's against the odds against our lives <laughs> I oh. told you. You you told me free reign. I'm yeah, going to no, talk. No, no. Please do. <laughs> like oh, man. You kill all the bees on the planet. You kill all the frogs on the planet. The entire ecosystem, you know, gets disturbed. You kill all the not kill. But if you don't have humans on the planet, everything thrives. It becomes much more lush and green and the planet is doing its own thing. So what is your purpose here? What are we here for? if it's like a relationship like i talk about relationships like everything is connected which is why i keep jumping i am single i'm happy i have a partner i should be happier there's no reason for me not to be happy if i'm with, if it's a partner otherwise there is no point to this why you with someone if you were better off by yourself 
so why are we here if the planet's better off without us right it's a relationship so shouldn't we be doing something that can enhance the entire quality of life within rather than trying to go to space and trying to get to other planets right? and then demolish that in the process and demolish that in the process because we are constant we've got this flag putting habit right this is mine this is mine this is mine yeah, almost like a phallic thing <laughs> yeah it is it's going like freaking it is mine <laughs> yeah we do that even in the relationships yeah, yeah. mine yeah. right like it's uh, you try to hold on to everything want to kind of capture everything we are doing that and we everyone in society today has become 7 billion humans and all of them are applauding this because they're like great way to live hmm. yeah <laughs> that's a different podcast <laughs> yeah. right so um, oh, so yeah this is for me this is my understanding of dharma when you understand this is when you find purpose now what do i do i have to i have understood the construct of dharma what do i do now because now jobs don't make sense corporates don't make sense a lot of what you want to buy and consume don't make sense so what do you do and then your journey of ar- of artha starts artha is actually meaning which we made money now but artha is meaning right in many languages so now you're looking for meaning because your existence doesn't make sense anymore your uh, you do realize that nothing changes if you die today so then what is the meaning of this what is the purpose of this and you then find that meaning with your dharma being strong if you find purpose before dharma then you are going down a very different route then you are going down a route that society has already taught you about of money and power and oppression and all of that stuff but if you find your dharma before your artha uh, great you will have that meaning once you work through that meaning then comes karma which is the enjoyment of the aspect of it it is not just love you will enjoy and reap the benefits of your dharma and artha and there's nothing wrong with it you are actually getting feedback you're not taking right so you will start enjoying this experience you will start enjoying whatever is happening and in the process of the three you will find moksha moksha is not after death which is another common misconception yeah, yeah. oh he's attained moksha no he's not he's coming back somewhere right <laughs> <laughs> right if especially depending on the life he's lived <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> yeah if he's been doing what everyone else is doing and then he died he is not going to attain moksha anywhere that is not how it works <laughs> moksha is while you live because then you've learned to be still you've learned to function have purpose enjoy it without having any impact on any consumption without Learn, disrupting anything without disrupting anything with yeah. being completely happy being completely in a very you know even balanced state this is moksha because then it doesn't matter if you live or die death has no meaning to you anymore this is moksha otherwise look at the world around everyone scared of death it's you're scared of something that is inevitable nothing in the universe has ever escaped this right in the universe not even a sun or a star or whatever but you think you will <laughs> <laughs> and you are scared of this happening when it is happening you want to control it you want to throw some 50 medicines at it try to get more technology to get a beating heart and you are trying to avoid the one thing that is inevitable in all of the cosmos moksha is that point when you don't care not in a disgruntled unhappy yeah, yeah. pissed off way yeah. right but in a very you are happy and you don't care about what is coming you know it will happen and you're leading to it in a way that every day can be amazing this is your four stages you will live a great life <laughs> <laughs> the end <laughs> oh man yeah oh no <laughs> So this actually got me thinking when i was listening to the previous conversation mm. do you think these happen do these have to happen sequentially or can these happen in cycles because there could be certain phases or certain let's say all of this happens in a day is that possible you will not get to the fourth yeah fourth probably it's a little if it's little. not in sequence mm. or unless the it's like this first bar has to fill up completely 
and then your second and your third before you get to the fourth. No, but you can always backtrack. You, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So you can go to Dharma, Artha, Kama in various functions. Kama can mean this today. Kama can mean something else tomorrow. Yeah. Artha can mean money today, whatever. Yeah. But until you get the three in line, you don't get to the fourth. No, the reason why I'm asking is because I'm sure you have felt it. I've felt it. We've all felt there's certain times when you're like, I really don't give a shit. Like, honestly, like, you know, like, with, huh. sincerely, I don't give a shit because this is inevitable. This is what's coming. I have done everything. I'm happy. I'm sorted. But that is very short lived. Correct. correct right. Correct. But that, that happens sometimes. That happens when life is great. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And kind of those good happen. days. Yeah, good days. Nothing's happening. No one's dying around you. No one's suffering. You're not suffering. You're, you're thriving. Like, you're thriving. You're like, oh, I got this. Yeah. You know, everything is great. But yeah. can it sustain? Mm. Is when all your three bars are full, then you have moksha where it sustains. Otherwise, you don't get to moksha. Otherwise, you don't get to that point of thought. Until all three kind of get to a point and say, okay, this is full. Now you completely understand it. Then the fourth works. But any of the other three can fill up in its own way. Right. Like you yeah. thought you figured out dharma. It's religion. Got it. Yeah. Then you realize maybe it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> it's being an atheist. <laughs> yeah. Being an atheist. Being an atheist is right. I'm like, okay, got it. You know, so you go through these bounces until you get to moksha. Right. So like it's something we say even in our uh, school. It's one of the motors of our school. Moksha is a way of life. Uh, mm. And we push that idea out as much as we can. Because mm-hmm. it's not about death and after death. And everyone's looking for that one escape. I think I, I think I remember Sadhguru saying this. Like, if you like death so much and if you think it's an escape, die now, no. What's stopping you? Why aren't you going there today? Like, what is stopping you from that? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> cynical, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> it is. See, that's the thing, right? We look at it as cynical. We look at it as... Like, in, in our house, we naturalize the conversation over death. We normalize it. I think it's important. It's very important because yeah. it will happen. Like one of the girls lost her dad recently. and She's been suffering through it. And then we had a nice long conversation on death. And I'm like, what is death teaching you right now? And then we spoke about that. But we don't, socially, we don't normalize death. We don't normalize that conversation. It's a little taboo. Yeah, yeah. like when my dad and I speak, it freaks out most people. Because we're talking about what rights should happen and we're talking about where it should happen and <laughs> where he should die so that people will come see him. Like I, I keep joking, I'm like, don't die in Bangalore, no one's going to come see you. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, and yeah. I don't know what I'm going to do with that after that. I'm going to just, you know, like, okay, he's dead. Like, and people hear this and they're like, how oh, are you talking to your father like this? I'm like, what? It won't happen. Yeah. Are you telling me this won't happen? Of course it'll happen. Right? Or I could go before him. Do you have a guarantee on this? No, you don't. So, why don't we normalize this? Then we'll probably have a better life that, okay, I could die right now. Can this conversation be better? Right? Can I spend this time on this podcast being in a great space because I could die tomorrow? Today. Next minute. On camera. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> Yeah. She's going to be okay? Yeah, she, she'll be fine. Did I trigger something? No, no, no. no. So she, uh, death's a little bit of a, uh, a soft spot for her. You know, she, um, her biggest fear is death. Not hers, her family member's death. So I'm sure, I knew the moment you start talking about it. You know, it, it's fine. I mean, it's what you said, right? And I, I've been talking to her about, and, and this is something I'm probably going to see keep in. Because I think more people need to, you know, not get into habit, but at least not make it a taboo. Every time we have spoken about it as well, and she very, she's very open about it, right? Like, like you said, everything is connected, right? So in her mind as well, and this is there for a lot of people, money is not probably the reason why someone's looking at, you know, getting money. Mm-hmm. It is to ensure someone's safety or that that could transpire into so many other things, right? Yes. So it's all connected. But this is what you've been told in your formative years or what you've been exposed to or, you know, the kind of upbringing you've had and all of that. That kind of, you know, exponentially evolves into this thing. And then after you hit your 25, 30 marks, some things will never change. No matter how, and again, I think, 
if you think about some some arguments and uh, debates are pointless because when someone set their i or their mind on something it's that's it correct it correct. doesn't change correct right and it's very tough to it only changes when they want to change you exactly. can't change anything exactly it's not your control right? absolutely not yeah. only your existence is in your control correct to a certain degree that, exactly i was going to say only some facets of that like how yes. you perceive your environment it's one of those concepts of the brahma vishnu shiva in the indian story so they are not gods they are not an old man sitting that is a very abrahamical visual that yeah. you've kind of grown into brahma is the reality you create the indian system has always talked about you being the center of existence because you are your center of existence so brahma is the reality you create it's when you open your eyes and the five or the many doorways in your body i think there are nine or something like that you create this reality you close your eyes you've stopped one you know reality you close your ears you've stopped one reality this is brahma so now if i look at this conversation i can perceive what i want out of it and you have no control right this conversation how you talk to me is entirely my perception right so i am the brahma of this reality you can't do anything to change how i think Correct. if i don't want to think that so i am the brahma of this so then that's when the whole concept of creating your reality once you've created a reality you think works maintaining that reality is your vishnu where you keep up the practice and you look for knowledge so that you can enhance your brahma in the process hmm. or you can decide that none of this makes sense mm-hmm. close your eyes disconnect from society and you become shiva this is the entire idea of the brahma vishnu shiva right so whatever reality like you said if people have made up their minds that they're not going to change what they think or what they are they're not going to change yeah. it's not going to happen correct because they are the brahma yeah. you cannot change that brahma right? I mean, most of like today's like any topic you take right any discussion mm-hmm. anything that's politically little sensitive Let's say vaccination. My God, that itself is such a big thing. It's such a hot buzzword yeah. today, right? right? And if you've decided your family is not going to va- get vaccinated, that's on them. That's it. There's that's nothing you them. can do. Yeah, nothing you can. Nothing you should do. Also, it's fine. The consequences of that entire cycle will be if you would make a decision. Is there anyone else who faces the consequences of this more than you? Of course, other people will. Yeah. But more yeah. than you, is there anyone else who faces this dis- consequence? possibly not yeah right whatever decision you make it's entirely the consequence will come somehow will come and if you are associated with a family then the consequences will come to your entire family through you if they choose to disconnect from that family then they will be spared the consequence and their <laughs> action also that's their decision con- correct uh, yeah. their decision defines their consequence so it's all about action consequence right there's no right and wrong the again the indian system does not talk about a right and wrong it's all action consequence right. which is very loosely karma although it's not that but you know it's not about oh i do good i'll get good no not necessary <laughs> <laughs> your perception of good that's so black and white yeah it's your perception of good which could be someone else's perception of bad exactly and so it's only action consequence there is action and then there is consequence to it whatever it is so even with the vaccination you don't want to vaccinate there's consequence you want to vaccinate there's consequence you want to be a part of social structures there's consequence like if for people who don't want to vaccinate they're like oh i don't want to i'm like but you want to be a part of the social structure <laughs> why you're part of this go live on a mountain don't vaccinate exactly yeah right but you want to be a part of this but you don't want to vaccinate yeah. but you don't care about uh, your neighbor's health what is what are we trying to get at right then you are really trying to control your brahma and be like it has to work my way this is the world's biggest problem correct like like literally like mold it the way i yeah. want it yeah i yeah. want it like this and the world has to function like this so this yeah. isn't this the world's biggest problem <laughs> i want to mold the world exactly what i think it should be how is this going to work <laughs> <laughs> Let me take this opportunity to talk about our audio partner Sennheiser. So, there are a lot of equipment that Sennheiser sent across to help with the creation process here at Against the Odds. 
Uh, I've obviously already spoken about the microphones before, but um, let me touch upon some of these incredible headphones that I've been using for our uh, monitoring and for editing and whatnot. It's the HD25. And yeah, what an incredible piece of equipment this is. So earlier I used to edit with, you know, these regular um, Apple earphones. And man, the moment I put these on, it really just amped up and you know, leveled up the, the detail with which I could listen to the tracks and uh, listen to, you know, just, just monitoring and just fe the feedback in general. And it's been incredible. So if you want to actually get a good pair of earphones or headphones rather, that's going to work uh, either with your workflows or it's going to help you in your content creation journey, then might I recommend the HD25s. Go check it out. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. We've had certain things that we, we have spoken about on the show that's opened up discussions and conversations and whatnot with our audience. So two things I want to touch upon. One is how things are out of your control. I'd like to talk a little bit about what we've been doing here with our show as well. And second is with, with something like that's, uh, we take it for granted that what we know, others know, you know, a lot of times, like for instance, let's say I've gotten so used to with the show itself, with pre-production, production, post-production, post marketing, all of that, right? We know, I, let's say I've picked up certain skill sets, or certain things that we need to mm. do, right? something that's so apparent to us or so obvious to us is not too obvious to other people. It's when you start talking to them is when you realize I, I explained marketing to Sarjanya itself, one of our mm. you know common friends, right? I explained certain parts and she was like, oh, we can do this too. And I was like, yeah, we can, right? And it's a very different approach because she's she hasn't looked at it the way I have. Or maybe it's, it's because I've gotten my hands dirty with it before. I've done it so many times. Mm. It's become second nature almost. With something like this, you are able to talk about it so openly or freely about death because you've been doing this for a while. It kind of becomes like, you know, like I said, second nature itself. Mm. People who haven't spoken about it haven't seen any of this from that perspective. Right. And again, I, I'm talking a little more technically what I've done, but what you're talking about kind of transcends all of that. I get that. But I think it's only when you start talking about it, engaging with it, you know, like communicating, it's a two-way dialogue. It kind of becomes something that you slowly start to understand. And again, it's your perception at the end of the day, right? Um, so, I wouldn't just say talking. Talking is great. Right. But like this is one kid uh, who came in and she was talking to me about all the books she read and how she's understood this and that and cast. And, and I'm sure whoever, all my kids, when they listen to this podcast, they'll know who I'm talking about <laughs> all the time. Um, but... And she was talking about how there was this whole um, thing she read about how four blind men or four or five blind men understood an elephant and one said, you know, hold the tail and the elephant is rubbery and, you know, rough and with hair on one end. The other held their leg and said the elephant is like a big pillar. The One of them held the trunk and said, no, it's very flexible and all of that. But because they couldn't see the entirety of the elephant, they couldn't understand the elephant. Now, this is an interesting thing for her. She was like, oh, I read about this. I'm like, have you seen an elephant? She's like, no. I'm like, then what are you talking about? Because you're spending your time talking, discussing and with books, but you're not experiencing life. And until you experience life, all of this sounds great. It's all in theory. It's all in theory until it right. happens to you. right? For example, you want to get comfortable with death. Let's talk about death. Let's understand its inevitability. Let's understand what it is. You want to move forward from there, go spend some time with death. Spend some time in the hospitals. Spend some time in places where people are dying. Spend some time in a crematorium. You will see it. You will see it. It will be traumatic. If you are guided through it, it, you will understand it. Depending on your mental mix-up and emotional mix-up, you will, either you will need guidance or not, preferably guidance, because it is very scary. It is very, very traumatic, very scary for a lot of people. Because we are, we are, we are like that girl who's, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. like that girl who's not seen an elephant, but has heard 
and people don't want to talk about it but this in this case you're not even hearing because people don't want to talk about it so it's such a distant idea for us mm. it's it's i think even more distant than climate change right <laughs> because even that we can't see it on a daily basis so we think it's not happening we'll do what we would want to do in life and again if you're made up your mind on climate change you're made up your mind on right, climate change exactly right <laughs> but we don't and you don't want to see anything else but if you don't see and experience like it's the reason i'm so comfortable talking about it i talk about it i talk about it to people and i've spent a lot of time around it to see that this happens and to see the grief of people and why they so upset after why they so upset before why we are fighting with hospitals to save lives why we are keeping people alive even though they're not really alive like it's there's all kinds of spaces to it was that like was that an intentional choice no no i just it happened it in happened my life it happened to be okay i think when i was very young a friend's father was on his deathbed i spent a month in the icu with him then with my mom my dad of course my dad still living mom's no more but when she was suffering i was again in the icu i'm the icu person right anything happens anywhere in the family i'm the first one to run to the hospital and then i'll sit in the icu i'm very used to curling up on plastic chairs and sleeping so it's not and if anyone hearing this would be like oh so you you know i've lost my mom i've seen my mom no you spend time in the waiting room and you see the relatives of everyone sitting there and you see them experiencing death you see the ones who will come back you spend days with these people like a community in the icu waiting room it could be weeks and you've become one little community of death the ones who come back smiling you know they've been discharged the ones who don't show up the next day you know what happened it's very simple language right they're not going to say bye to you because there is a lot of grief there and sometimes you see them coming out grieving you see all of this you see what life is really about all the money all the time all the luxuries it boils down to this it boils down to this and no matter what this is the reality of life mm-hmm. but that's what you don't all of this sounds great i'll talk about it you'll hear it and you'll be like oh okay interesting maybe not interesting maybe this is bullshit experience it mm-hmm. be there right be there for it could be someone in your family someone in your friends be there just try to soak it in it will hit you like a wall mm. like a train right it will hit you so it's preferable to do it with someone who can or do it in a community where you can all hold each other's hand which right. is why community is so important we need community mm. is why today at home the kids are sitting with their one kid they might not be able to do what i can possibly do but they'll hold hands and they'll try and i've left them out in the deep end of the water today so you do it with come you do it with people like you see people who during covid the ones who been on relief work the ones who've been out there trying to help people save people do whatever they've dealt with their own trauma because again no community everyone's doing it in their own little silos but that's the kind of trauma that hits you they will see death differently doctors see that i have a couple of friends who are doctors death for them is a very different animal very yeah, different yeah yeah every day right so it's not a question of yes we need to talk about it but we need to go another step to normalize it but that's the thing with everything right yeah. like like yeah. you spoke about how this girl read books but it doesn't end by just reading books and again i think i've spoken about this on the show before the you can <laughs> you can like you know blow your own trumpet and say i've read 50 books this year i've read 100 books this year have you implemented any of them yeah have you experienced any of them yeah. any of anything yeah otherwise it's yeah. nothing it's yeah. pointless right what's yeah. this knowledge for yeah <laughs> there's a lovely bruce lee saying i think right you cannot learn to swim without stepping into the water you read what you want <laughs> under water but yeah. doesn't matter <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter without stepping into the water you cannot learn to swim right you cannot learn about things on the sidelines it's very very simple and it comes back to what you had mentioned earlier about uh, the way i teach and leading and stuff like that 
I love the old school idea. Today we have coaches who probably weren't great in their time of play, mm-hmm. who probably can't play anymore. But they're great coaches, and no doubt they're great coaches. Or they say great players can't become good coaches. I feel that's a very modern narrative. I like the days of the Dronacharyas and the Vashishtas and the Parashurams. Your teacher would kick your ass. <laughs> right? No matter how good you are. Yeah. You could be Arjuna, amazing, best archer in the world. Can't take on Drona. His teacher is not someone who sits on the sidelines. His teacher at twice his age would kick his ass. I prefer that kind of teaching. It's a great kind of schooling. You know, it kind of goes back there. Like you have to, you have to step into the water, even as a teacher. Like come back to that thought, right? You have, even as a teacher, you are not going to be sitting on the sidelines. Every day you're going to learn something new. I am an expert on the subject. No, you're not. You have to continue swimming. You have to continue doing. And that's all old school training. And never ending classes. Right? All martial arts old school training. Today you have cricket and all of that where people sit on the sidelines. Coach is done. No more a player. You look at your old school martial arts. They are still practicing. They will kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like they are still doing it. Which is why their learning is so... It's so full of wisdom. There is so much that they are learning every day that they keep passing on. Not that I used to know this, that's all. Mm, yeah, yeah. So much there. Oh man. <laughs> it gets you thinking, right? It really does. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> no, and yeah, so like I was saying, the other part, right? The control bit, like what's not in the vicinity of our control is something that we need to f- just give up on. You know, don't even think too much about, right? For instance, we worry so much about outcomes because we have certain expectations and whatnot. So I'll give you a simple example with our show. I think I'm a little late to the podcasting game, like this generally speaking, right? Maybe in India, re- relatively early, but still, you know, the idea was to create something that gets people's attention and also is interesting, teaches them something, entertaining, all of that. And again, we have a lot of video element to it, all of that. Again, this is my creativity or imagination, like you said. But I have no guarantee whether this is going to be like, this episode is going to be perceived, seen, going to be like by millions of people, whether it's going to go viral. But people get into all of these things because they might have seen someone else who's done something like this and like, ah, that guy's gone viral. <laughs> I have to go viral. I'll do the exact same thing. Right. But it doesn't work that way, right? There's no, again, because it's our expectations. It's what we have kind of set in our, you know, in our own heads. And we're like, if you do this for six months, People have told me if you're consistent, pakka it'll work. It will work for sure. You don't have to worry. Just keep doing it. Sure. And then, and then you know what happens, right? <laughs> oh man! Yeah. So it's it's very nuanced, all of this, right? But we we get we take it for what it is, which is basically Instagram quotes. So <laughs> correct. It's, it's we will chase chase life, and then feel good about all the quotes you see online. So you but you don't live it, like. Can we pick five Instagram quotes we've read and decided this is how I'm going to live? I don't see it around me. Right? I don't see people doing that. And even, like I know a lot of people who looked at our school and said, wow, that's amazing. That's such a brilliant thing you're doing. Yeah, can you also do it now? Mm-hmm. I'd love to have more schools like mine. I'd love to have more people out there who are doing education for free. Are we doing it now? I get invited to colleges and schools which charge you a lot. I don't know why. I don't understand it. Because then I go there and tell them I run a school for free. And they're like, wow. I'm like, I don't understand this. Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, is there no thought into this space? But it is how it is, right? It is how the world is. Even when you are saying about control, we are constantly chasing something. We don't know what we are chasing. It's that... Uh, It's like a dog behind a car wheel. Yeah, I know. (laughs) We don't know what we're chasing. But there is an urge to chase. There's a joke there, right? The dog gets to the car and then he's like, should I drive it or what (laughs) am I supposed to do? (laughs) Exactly, right? Oh, man. (laughs) But if the car takes off, the dog is running full speed and then barking at the car because it took off. (laughs) What do you want to do with it though? Oh, man. So, I think our lives have become like that. Like, People ask me why I do art. I'm like, you leave me in a corner, you leave me in this room, there's a tissue paper and a pencil, I'll draw. 
this is what i do i don't do it for your recognition i don't do it for instagram i don't do it for money this is what i like to do hence i'm seeing if i can make money out of it but if you're doing something because it'll go viral because it'll be a success because it'll be all of that then you don't know what you're chasing because those things don't have formula it could be the worst thing someone's heard or it could be like you and me are sitting here talking laughing and we're like oh so much fun and someone listen like this is boring yeah. you have no control on this so then you and me should sit here and talk only because we enjoy this conversation not because what this will lead to right, right? right. and if we don't enjoy this conversation we should end it here simple right. because we, you have zero control on like you said control on some aspects i would say you have control on no aspects you have control on your ability to react to your environment that is the only control you have you have no control power goes off right now you have zero control all of this will stop it's happened <laughs> right it's happened <laughs> yeah i can get up and go you have zero control right you can get up and go i have zero control i had this in the past where i block out certain you know someone's calendar the guest's calendar mm. and then they flip it and they say yeah so i can i'm i'm busy schedule i have to do this i have to pull it back by an hour and a half and i'm like wait i didn't block it out in the studio they like <laughs> wait what are you saying and then it's anxiety right and like then, so yeah. that's what i'm saying you have the ability to control how you act in any given scenario but you have no other control so if someone cancels on me i'm like ha ah, okay what else can i do now and i'll go do something else and that's largely how my life is going at this point like i said no thought it's only action like you say oh we are cancelling powers out i'll find the next best thing to do right now whatever can engage me at that point simple because you have the ability to control that i wouldn't call it reaction control the act but otherwise zero control around you zero you have no control on what will happen in this country or what will happen on the road down there or whatever i'm going to maintain some sensibility of what i say but <laughs> whatever right i like how you encapsulated it <laughs> in one word <laughs> whatever let's not get into the details yeah, right <laughs> but you i think you have a sense of how far my brain mind goes at this point <laughs> oh man yeah i think that's this is just being great like i i i think i i wanted to cover a couple of things and we have covered more <laughs> which is great um i think i let's get into one part which i ask of all my guests which is what is one last message for our audience something either that we've already spoken about or it could be just anything that you're maybe thinking about right now someone asked me once what the definition of love is and i said my best understanding that love is in the core of all of us the more our layers of baggage inhibitions conditioning we can remove all that fears what's left is love and if we can learn to live in love then it's a fantastic world to be in one message i would say is can we learn to live in love <laughs> awesome and if you had to send people online where can we send them Vanar Sena Studios on Instagram Vanar Sena School on Instagram Vanar Sena Studios dot com website um, YouTube If you do get a surge of applicants from this, do let me know. <laughs> I'd <laughs> really sure. like like to know. For sure, for sure. <laughs> no, but this yeah. has been great, Vivek, and awesome. and I tell this to all my guests, and I honestly, truly mean it. We'll have you here again, and we'll talk about more things. Awesome! And I look forward. But ha- I hope you like this. I, hope I this really is- enjoyed it. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah. really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. Especially yeah. the no holes part. Part it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm going to talk about everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Awesome! Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. Thanks, sir. So yeah, that concludes part two of my conversation with Vivek. I hope you liked it. I loved hosting Vivek. Had a great time. Apoorva and I, my wife and I went out to eat Thai food after we had this conversation and this whole conversation kind of lingered on we continued to talk about so many of these things and uh, yeah Vivek thank you so much for making time this was great and for you audience members I hope you guys liked it as well and I hope you enjoyed it and I don't have anything else in this episode so yeah I'll see you on the next one cheers cheers